Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Advances and Options for Wood Flooring Installations. We have some brief housekeeping today before we start. Your phones are on mute. If you have any questions, please type them into the Q&A box in the corner of your screen, and we'll answer them at the end of today's session, time permitting, or via an email after. And you can always send questions to MAPE Digital at mape.com. Now, without further delays, I'd like to introduce today's speaker, Jeff Johnson. Jeff is the business manager from Mape's floor covering and installation systems line. He brings to the industry more than 30 years experience in the development and marketing of floor covering installation products. Practical experience in the construction industry and as a bench chemist, give Jeff an insightful perspective on surface preparation, moisture mitigation, and floor covering installation. Jeff, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Shen, and welcome everyone. Um, I'm very happy to be here and thank you for spending some time with us today to take a look at some advanced options on uh, subfloor preparation and bonding solutions for wood flooring. Um, and I think we'll, I just lost my slideshow. There we go. <laughs> um, bear with me, technical difficulties. And hopefully we'll get started. All right, so to begin with, um, let's deal with some of the basic rules of life, the four rules for a successful wood floor installation. Um, this is important for us to kind of talk about this, uh, to preface all of the options that we might have for wood floor installation, but uh, some of this may seem rudimentary, but it's all worth discussing to make sure we're clear about what is required for any kind of successful wood floor installation or resilient or carpet or ceramic as far as that goes. These are some of the basic rules of life that have to be uh, taken care of and we hopefully have map-based solutions for quite a few of them. First thing is clean. Uh, obviously all the subfloors that we deal with um, need to be clean, not looking like this photograph we have on the screen, thank God. Um, but they have to be dust free. All the debris has to be removed. All the curing agents, parting compounds, taco sauce, parting grease, whatever you need to, all that stuff has to be removed from the subfloor, uh, whether it be a concrete deck or a wood deck or whatever, all that needs to be removed prior to doing any kind of wood floor installation for a variety of, of good reasons. Um, first of all, we need to have it clean so that we get proper bonding of our adhesives. Second of all, you don't want any staining contributing components that might migrate up through the surface of the floor, so on and so forth. So this is very important to have the subfloor clean. Next, it's got to be flat. And flat is extremely important uh, for wood floor installation, perhaps more important for wood than it is for anything else. Um, in, in my particular uh, perspective. Uh, wood is a rigid material and doesn't necessarily like to conform to the subfloor like uh, a resilient flooring, LVT, for example, or carpet or carpet tile. Those will kind of follow any contours that you might have in the subfloor. Uh, wood is a rigid material and doesn't necessarily like to, to settle down, if you will. There are NWFA requirements, that's the National Wood Flooring Association. There are requirements for how flat that floor has to be, and that is 3 16 of an inch out of variation in a 10 foot radius. So if you are a good flooring contractor, one of the tools you'll have in your truck is a 10 foot straight edge that you can run across the floor and identify where there might be high spots or low spots. Why this is important? Uh, is that there are certain requirements and certain aesthetic reasons why you would want to have that floor flat. Um, the ASTM F710 standard, which is uh, uh, the one we refer to an awful lot for resilient flooring installations or moisture sensitive floor flooring installations, does talk a lot about how flat a floor needs to be. Uh, there is an ASTM standard uh, that's uh, used by the concrete placement contractor who determines the floor flatness uh, suitability for what's going to be installed on top of it. 
Um, that's very important to make sure that that is uh, followed true uh, and put in place according to this, uh, the standards. Floor flatness is important for safety reasons. First, first and foremost, you don't want to have floors that look like the Appalachian mountain range. You're trying to walk across that. It's a, it's a trip and fall hazard, frankly. It's something you need to make sure it's very flat. Uh, the visual aesthetics. Uh, I, this poor house that you see on the picture on the screen here is obviously got some visual problems and probably has a few more problems than just a visual aesthetic situation going on, uh, but it is something you need to make sure uh, you deal with. I, the pretty pictures that you see on magazines and, and room scenes are all have super flat floors and the floors look beautiful when they're installed on that kind of a situation. Uh, real life applications, you, I have seen in my personal experience, things that are not smooth and prepped out as, as flat as they could have been and the visual aesthetics are somewhat a, a, of a challenge. Uh, from installation perspective, it's extremely uh, beneficial to have a flat floor. Uh, more flat than smooth. That's a, We need to talk a little bit about that here in the next slide. When you're dealing with wood floor or any other kind of rigid flooring material, and there are a variety of other types that are in this category. Having a floor flat makes the insulation go so much easier as opposed to something that is smooth, but not flat. Hope you understand the definition there. Um, when you're dealing with wood floor insulation, one of the requirements that we have for bonding typically is 100% coverage. We wanna have the adhesive in full contact with the substrate and in full contact with the flooring material. The only way that happens effectively is if you have a super flat floor. Now keep in mind that that NWFA standard was a 3 16 variation in 10 foot. Let's just say for the sake of discussion, the sake of argument that most wood flooring is installed with a quarter inch notch trowel, quarter by quarter by quarter, square notch trowel at a 45 degree angle. So that means the adhesive is maybe in that 3 16 of an inch up position. Uh, if that subfloor is not flat enough, those trowel ridges are not going to come up in proper contact with the wood flooring. Uh, and that's going to create a hollow spot uh, over time. Um, you may be able to get the wood squished down into that adhesive bed by stepping on it or putting some pressure on it. Um, but if you don't keep the weight on there, don't keep the pressure on it, that wood floor will spring back out again. You'll wind up with adhesive uh, breaking or cohesive failure in that adhesive bond. And you're gonna have a, a, a hollow spot going forward and you have to deal with that uh, downstream. Um, obviously, one of the thought processes that a contractor might have about a subfloor that's not smooth is, well, I'll just use more glue to fill in the holes and fill in the, the, the bird baths and, and I'll get all that glue to come up and meet the floor. Uh, I hate to remind you guys, but wood floor adhesives are not cheap. Um, they do have some costs associated with them and using them as a um, subfloor preparation material is not necessarily the right solution. Some of them are not 100% solids and they're not going to give you the end result that you would like to look for. So a smooth floor, a flat floor is definitely gonna help. It's definitely gonna help in placement of the material. I've done this myself on numerous occasions where you're trying to put together a tongue and groove on a wood floor installation. The subfloor is out of flatness and you're in a bird bath area. Things just don't wanna to fit together properly. So having a flat floor is extremely important. And we'll talk a lot about how we get there a little later on in the presentation. They need to be structurally sound for obvious reasons. You can't, uh, sorry about this, put lipstick on a pig and make it something more than it's not. You need to make sure that your substrates are, are sturdy enough, structurally sound enough in order to take the new flooring. You just can't put flooring on top of it and hope it's gonna solve the problems. Here obviously are a couple of pictures of some horror stories in front of you of, of things that you would not want to install over. You need to make sure the concrete is stable and not moving. If it has issues like that, you need to call a structural engineer and figure out ways to, to resolve that. If the wood sub, 
freight is rotted out and the trusses are, are, are rotted as well, that's going to need to be replaced. And it needs to be structurally sound again before any of this stuff is done, purely from a function standpoint as well as a safety standpoint. So it's got to be structurally sound. When we're dealing with wood, it's also very important that that substrate be dry. Um, Wood, as you should know, is probably the most moisture sensitive flooring product that we deal with on a day to day basis. LVT, resilient sheet vinyl, pretty much can stick those things in a bucket of water and they're not going to be affected. That's not the case with wood, uh, whether it be engineered wood, solid wood, exotic wood, um, all that stuff is, uh, I don't know what's going on here, it's going to have to be dealt with. Uh, you need to make sure it's dry. I apologize for this, folks. I do not know what's happening here. Um, anyway, no, I don't understand. Bear with me. So we need to make sure that the, the floor is dry. According to most of the wood floor installation specifications we deal with, uh, we need to have a three pounds number on the moisture vapor emission rate of an ASTM 1869. This is over concrete or 75% less on a 2170. That's the RH probe test. Again, the NWFA is requiring for wood underlayments to be in the 12 to 15% moisture range. These are typically measured by a different piece of equipment. We'll talk about that in a minute. The slabs, if you're doing this uh, over a uh, an elevated base, a crawl space, they need to be well ventilated and you need to have a moisture barrier on the slab, on the ground as well. So I'd highly recommend you research the 2019 NWFA installation guidelines and there's a lot of good resources there for you in terms of how to prepare a concrete subfloor, wood subfloor uh, for the installation of wood flooring. Okay, moving forward. How we measure moisture on concrete, this is something we all should have a pretty good handle on at this point in time. The ASTM F710, uh, F1869 test is a calcium chloride test. Don't need to spend too much time talking about how these tests are run, but it's important to do it. The important thing here is to say that we, MAPE, do not recommend the use of a inductive or electromagnetic testing machine to determine the moisture content of a concrete slab. We're always going to refer you back to these kinds of test methods to determine uh, moisture content of a concrete slab. Uh, for RH, for wood floors, on the other hand, uh, we're looking for you to run pin meters or inductive or electromagnetic test methods to determine the moisture content of those uh, types of substrates. Typically, they're going to run in the range anywhere between 3 and 32%. But again, you need to make sure that these things are dry. Why? As I said, again, moisture and wood and water and wood do not get along very well together. Now, I guess they really do like each other when they do come in contact with each other. They want to do all sorts of fun stuff like swell and grow and expand. Um, all of which is not something you want to have happen on a wood floor installation. This is a, a slight a little bit of statistics for you. Um, that's all based on some uh, data generated by the National Wood Flooring Association, the forestry organization as well. But uh, if you start with moisture content of a oak, red oak floor at 5%, for example, and somehow or other the, the humidity of that board changes by not controlling your moisture in your room, uh, the air conditioning goes off, your windows are opening up, and all the humidity changes, you're going to get a percentage change in the moisture content of that red oak. There is dimensional change coefficient that's expressed for that. If that plank width is five inches, that individual piece is going to expand by that range, so if you have a room that's 10 foot by 14 feet and you have that 4% change in humidity in the wood, its potential growth is 1.7 inches in length and 2.4 inches in width. Now, I don't know about you, but most of the wood flooring that's normally installed is a has a requirement of a three quarter inch, perhaps uh, expansion zone around the perimeter. 
I got one on the left and the right side, so I've got maybe an inch and a half of expansion zone to deal with. If I have this kind of condition occur in my wood floor, I've obviously expanded past my range of, of that my expansion zone will take in accommodation, and this is going to wind up buckling on the floor or blowing the wood, actually blowing your walls out uh, on the perimeter. So wood definitely needs to have some protection on from moisture, and we'll certainly talk about that as, as we get down the road. So how do we live with the four rules? How do we keep everything clean, smooth, flat, structurally sound, and dry? First of all, we need to keep it clean. Not something that MEPI has an offering for, but we do need to sweep the floors. We would highly recommend use of a vacuum system more so than a broom these days with the concerns we have on silica exposure. Uh, a good heap of vacuum to pick up all the dirt and debris is highly recommended. Um, but the floor does need to be clean. If we're gonna need to prep this floor, um, whether, and it's dry, whether it's dry concrete or wood, these are kind of the safe zones, if you will, for wood floor installation. We've already done our testing. It's below that three pound moisture vapor emission rate. It's below 75%. You know, if we need to make it flat, here are some solutions on how to do that. Planted patch is a great solution. Uh, can work for uh, both concrete and subfloor, uh, uh, wood subfloor uh, applications has some moisture limits of 8 to 85 um, percent and it's a great product that we have we know very well. Planet Prep SC can also be used to make a floor uh, smooth as well but keep in mind that Planet Patch and Planet Prep SC are great products for dealing with surface defects, gaps in the floor, nail holes, spall marks and whatever but they're going to make the floor smooth not necessarily flat. If you want a flat floor, you need to look into one of MAPE's self-leveling underlayment options. And we have a lot of them. I don't really need to go through the entire packaging assortment, but virtually everything we have on the list using primer T over most common substrates of wood and concrete are great solutions for making a floor flat for the installation of wood flooring. A couple of things you need to keep in mind uh, when you're working with MAPE materials is that there is a little bit of um, a wait for the things to cure and dry time before you can uh, install wood flooring. You have to put some things in the oven, things have to cook a little bit in order for you to, before you begin bonding wood flooring in place. Planet Patch and Planet Prep SC are the, probably the shortest uh, wait times that you've got to do in the oven, if you will, before you can go and install wood flooring. The wood floor, uh, the leveling solutions are a little bit longer, but again, the reason why that is, is that in order to make a soft leveling underlayment, you have to add a lot of water to a powder and spread it across the floor. That water needs to come out of the system so it doesn't have an impact on the wood flooring you're installing. So do keep in mind uh, the time frame that we're suggesting for waiting prior to the application of uh, any kind of leveling comp, uh, any kind of wood floor. So mind mind your recipe and uh, bring the cookies up. Don't, don't start installing before these things have a chance to properly dry. Just a note about why Planetex SL and SLF have a variable wait time on them is that they are gypsum products. Gypsum products cure differently than cement-based materials. You actually have to let all of the water evaporate. So Planetex SL and SLF are very dependent upon how thick you apply them. If you put it down at an eighth of an inch thickness, the, the wait time can be as little as 12 hours. If you put them down at two inch thicknesses, the wait time can be as much as three weeks. So it's something you need to really understand before you, uh, you start bonding wood floor on top of those two levelers. Now, if you're dealing with concrete, which we deal with more often these days than in the past, because we're trying to do things quicker, I don't want to wait for the concrete to dry. I need to come up with some solutions for how to prepare damp concrete. The products that I just mentioned to you before are good up to about eight pounds, maybe 90% RH, but we now have installation systems and products that can take wood floor and bond it on higher moisture concrete slabs, but we need to deal with how to prepare them and how to get them smooth, flat, and level um, as well. 
And that's where we deal with three unique products in the MAPE line that are good for use on concrete uh, up to 99% or even 100% RH uh, going forward. We have a skim coat in the form of Planet Prep MRS. We have a patch and repair product uh, in the form of MAP, uh, MAPCHEM Quick Patch and a leveling compound in the form of MAP Ultra Plan Extreme 2. These are the products you should be going to if you're doing any kind of wood floor bonding on a concrete substrate using a wood floor controlling adhesive system. Uh, and we're going to talk a lot more about that as we get down the path here, but it's something you definitely need to have as part of your arsenal of tools when you're installing wood flooring on concrete. Moisture resistant solutions for patching, um, you need to keep in mind that uh, they can be used a lot sooner uh, than normal uh, products in terms of um, getting on them for bonding for wood flooring. And we look at the moisture resistant adhesive systems is that uh, target for when you can go on for wood floor installation on top of MRS, Quick Patch and Extreme 2. All of those can be bonded to with a moisture controlling uh, wood flooring adhesive for wood within two to three hours after application. Um, irrespective of how thick they were applied, that's the window for upper application. If you really want to focus on preparing a concrete slab for wood floor installation, the ideal solution is to disassociate it completely, the wood that is, from the concrete substrate. And that is by the installation of a moisture control membrane. Uh, we have a variety of solutions for that um, that are designed to work within certain ranges of moisture control. Uh, this first one to start with is Planet Seal MSP, and that's suitable for use on concrete slabs up to 15 pounds of RH, uh, 15 pounds of moisture vapor emission rate, 99% RH. It's a water-based material applied in a double coat application method, uh, works very easily and very quickly, and does a great job of protecting any kind of wood floor, uh, any kind of flooring installation on top of it after it's been properly installed. For more robust solutions, uh, if you really want to protect a high-end installation of wood floor, uh, we would recommend uh, either one of Planisil PMB, Planisil VS, or Planisil VS Fast. Uh, these do take a little bit extra effort to install. The, the epoxy products in the form of Planisil VS and VS Fast do require some surface profile in order for them to work. Planisil PMB just requires a porous concrete slab to work. But these are good up for anything over that 15 pound moisture vapor emission rate and even up to 100% RH. And so if you're really trying to protect your wood floor investment, I would highly recommend looking at the addition of a moisture control membrane as part of that solution. Um, here's that lineup to give you some idea of how they work. Um, one thing that's important to note, and I wanted you to keep this in the back of your head, was when we talk about bonding solutions, that Planisil PMB, in my opinion, is one of the silver bullets for uh, wood floor bonding solutions using uh, urethane or hybrid polymer type uh, bonding adhesives. A simple one coat of this on a porous concrete slab uh, combined with a urethane or MS-based adhesive provides 100% moisture control protection for that wood flooring solution. So it's a, something I need for you to keep in mind and something, uh, it is an additional step, um, but it makes virtually every urethane or MS adhesive we've got a full protected moisture control system for wood flooring. Anyway, uh, there are some times involved for these things to to put them, install them, and to let them dry. Uh, epoxies do take a little bit longer to install because of the preparation and the dry time. Uh, PMB and MSP are relatively fast things that will help you out going forward. Okay, so that's the prep. We've got it flat, leveled, and uh, we have it dry. So we have our conditions ready for wood floor installation. Now let's talk about some bonding solutions for wood flooring and MAPE has quite a few of them to choose from. So that's why we need to spend a little bit of time talking about this as well. 
All right, we start off with standard wood flooring adhesives on wood underlayments and dry concrete substrates. This is what I would consider the safe zone for wood floor installation. So you kind of can relax your hair a little bit, put on some jazz in the background and install flooring knowing that you've got a, a substrate that's not gonna give you much problems. So you can use things that are a little bit, I guess, safer if you will to use. We begin with, um, this is almost older technology, but we have a couple of water-based solutions for wood floor installation, which begin with Ultrabond Eco 960. Uh, this is a, a very high solids, professional uh, acrylic-based wood floor adhesive designed for the installation of engineered wood flooring only on dry uh, concrete substrates or wood underlayments. Some of the benefits here of an Eco 960 would inc include the fact that it, since it's water-based, it's water cleanup, uh, it's non-skinning, it's very sticky and gooey, it's very easy to trowel, and it has a very long working time. Uh, again, so if you're dealing with a concrete slab um, uh, or a wood subfloor that it's, it's dry and you're looking for a cost-driven solution, these are, uh, Eco 960 is a great solution for that as well. You do need to keep in mind that it is a water-based product, and I would encourage you to uh, read and, uh, and uh, stick with all the recommendations for flash time before you start installing wood flooring into this. This is not something you really want to trowel out on the floor and immediately start slapping wood or engineer wood flooring into it. You need to let that adhesive flash off some of its water before you start installing the wood flooring in order to avoid potential cupping or bowing situations because of the additional water. Another one we have on the offering for engineer wood flooring is Ultrabond Eco 962. Another high solids water-based solution, but this one's a little bit different in the fact that it is a pressure sensitive installation as opposed to Eco 960, which was a wet lay type of uh, a product. What you want to do with Eco 960 on in the installation is trowel it on the floor, let it evaporate most, but not all of its moisture, and then start installing wood in, into it as well. Now, the advantage here is obviously you've got a very sticky adhesive. This one is like human flypaper, very aggressive stuff. So it's going to be able to accommodate some bow in the wood, some variations in the subfloor, very sticky material and holds things down. Uh, see some of the benefits here. Again, it's water cleanup, it's non-skinning as well, use of trailability, multi-flooring usage as well. One of the neat things about Eco 962 is its function, yes, for engineering wood flooring, but it's also got some functionality for luxury vinyl tile and plank, cork flooring, cork underlayment as well. So here is a great product, Eco 962, that is a, flooring installers go-to product. Um, it does a lot of different things out of a single bucket. So that's very exciting. A little bit more in the robust category, if you're dealing with um, solid wood, for example, uh, solid domestic hardwoods, where we would like to recommend our first urethane adhesive in the box, and that would be Ultrabond Eco 975. This is a 100% solids, one component, moisture cured urethane adhesive specifically designed for the installation of domestic solid as well as engineered wood flooring. Now, when we get into the world of urethane adhesives and modified silane adhesives, that's when we start to shine uh, with regard to the installation of solid wood or engineered wood. These have absolutely no water involved in them. There's no solvent involved into them. So there's not gonna be any impact uh, in terms of causing any wood or engineered wood flooring to bow, cup, or change dimensional uh, size and shape because of anything that's soaking into the back of the wood. Um, Eco 975, oops, some benefits here are it is 100% solids. Why is that important? Uh, is that 100% you know, solids means it's not going to shrink while it cures. If things shrink while they cure, they have a tendency to pull apart if they're not uh, in contact with each other, creating some hollow spots and creating some loose bonding areas. 100% solids means that what you see on the floor is what you're gonna get when it's cured. Um, and that will help solve a lot of your 
hollow spots and uh, bonding issues. It's lightweight. Most urethane adhesives are in the range of about 14 pounds per gallon. So you can kind of do the math. A five pound bucket is of a normal urethane adhesive is gonna weigh roughly 70 pounds. It's heavy stuff. Uh, Ultrabond Eco 975 is considerably lighter weight. Uh, I would say like two thirds of that. So a five gallon bucket of Eco 975 is gonna weigh somewhere in the 55 to 60 pounds per bucket. So it's easier to move around a little bit lighter weight, so uh, something to think about as well. But specifically designed for domestic wood flooring. Uh, I would not recommend, and we do not recommend the use for Eco 975 for exotic materials uh, for, uh, for direct bonding. All right, again, those are some of the benefits we have there. there. The next product we have on our offering for uh, the safe zone, if you will, uh, is Eco 980. This is perhaps MAPE's biggest selling urethane wood adhesive on the market today. It is our premium urethane adhesive for hardwood flooring. Again, 100% solids, uh, 100, uh, one component more secure urethane. Uh, it's tan in color. Uh, the reason why we have tan color is so that if uh, our adhesives do by chance get oozed up between the tongue and groove assembly as you're putting wood together. It doesn't leave you with a bright white line or some other kind of color. It will blend in with the wood as well. So um, again, easy to trialability, designed for the installation of engineered solid domestic, I apologize, this is incorrect, and exotic hardwoods, uh, as well as bamboo. Um, again, easy trialability, an excellent trial rich holdout. It's very important for a wood flooring adhesive product to have good trowel ridge pulled up. Again, keep in mind that wood floor is not flexible. It doesn't really want to move. Uh, you need to have an adhesive that stays up in an up position so that when you apply the wood flooring on top of it, it has uh, good contact. If the adhesive slumps out and flows away from the trowel ridge, then you're not going to get the right kind of contact that you need to have in order to make a, an excellent bond. So um, very important to keep in mind is the how the product actually applies. That, and all of MEPE's uh, adhesives, whether they be water-based, urethane-based, or MS-based, have excellent trowel-rich holdup, perfect for the installation of all forms of wood flooring. So those were the safe zones. And now we're going to get into... Um, areas where we might have a little bit of a moisture challenge in the substrate. And we're gonna need look at our wood flooring options uh, for wood in on damp concrete substrate. So we need to take a little bit more careful concern on that as well. This is the first one out of the box is our uh, MS, a modified silane formulation. A modified silanes differ from urethanes quite simply, and I make this maybe a little bit too simple, based on the reactive group that makes them cure. Modified silane has a trimethoxy silane group, which is a different kind of chemical structure versus an isocyanate. They both react with moisture in the air to create a urethane rubber, if you will. Uh, it's just a reactive base. Um, so the advantage of an MS-based adhesive, however, is it's a little bit easier to clean up on the top of a pre-finished hardwood as compared to a urethane adhesive. But we deal with urethane, uh, uh, Eco 983. This is a mid-range performer in terms of moisture resistance. Uh, it is still 100% solids. It's a modified silane formulation. It is easy cleanup designed for the installation of engineered and solid domestic hardwood and is a mid-range moisture control. So it good, it's good up to concrete slabs that have 15 pounds of moisture vapor emission rate and 90% relative humidity. Um, there is a uh, recommend, recommended installation practice. I believe we provide trowel clips to put on top of your trowels to make sure you get a 100% monolithic layer uh, when you're installing uh, wood flooring in this domain. And that, folks, is extremely important uh, to keep in mind of when you're installing um, any form of wood flooring using a moisture-controlling type of adhesive. 
key factor is you've got to have a 100% a monolithic layer of adhesive underneath the floor. Any gaps in that application are going to create moisture fountains, if you will, um, which can affect, cause some damage to the wood flooring. So it's extremely important that you pay special attention at making sure you're applying them in 100% monolithic layer uh, when you're installing flooring. The next adhesive we have in our um, moderate mid-range zone is a new one we've introduced not too long ago. I think this was a year and a half ago. It's Eco 977. This is a facet urethane adhesive, um, which has mid-range performance uh, moisture control as well, up to 12 pounds moisture vapor emission rate and 95% relative humidity. This one does not come with the trowel clip arrangement, but does have some specific trowel recommendations on how to get this product applied and get the moisture protection that you need in order to, to work. Uh, again, it's 100% solids. This one is urethane based. Uh, it is fast set. This one will lock up the wood flooring within about two hours after application. So if you're looking for a fast track installation adhesive on a high moisture concrete slab, uh, Ultra Bond Eco 977 is the right way to go. So you can install wood flooring. Two hours later, the product is locked down and ready to go. You open it up to foot traffic and you're you're ready to go. Again, designed for engineered solid domestic hardwood uh, and with mid-range moisture control. The last category we deal with in terms of adhesives are the, the all-in ones. So the things that uh, do a lot more than just bond, do a lot more than just uh, provide uh, a moisture barrier, but also add some modicum of acoustic control. So we're now dealing with the, the products that oftentimes we call three-in-one type materials. And we begin the discussion with our first MS adhesive, another MS adhesive called Ultrabond Eco 985. Uh, this one is another 100% solids modified silane material. Another advantage is that it is easy cleanup if it gets on the surface of the wood flooring. Design for engineered and solid hardwood of all kinds, domestic as well as hardwood, and is the ultimate moisture control uh, plus acoustic dampening. This one is good up to 25 pounds of moisture vapor emission rate, 100% RH, plus provides that acoustic dampening for uh, elevated structures, condo projects, anywhere where you would need some sort of reduction of sound transmission from the upper level to the lower level. All of this data that you need uh, and the test forms are available online. Um, our technical data sheet for Ultima Eco 985 has all the acoustic data available for you if you want to take a look at that as well. Again, comes with trowel clip applications uh, that allow it for creating that 100% monolithic layer for application. Another adhesive we have in our offering, again, this is another flagship for um, FA in the form of Ultrabond Eco 995. This is our three-in-one premium moisture control adhesive. Again, it's 100% solids, urethane-based, tan color, engineered solids and exotic hardwoods, as including bamboo, uh, and the ultimate moisture control plus acoustic dampening. Again, the acoustic testing is available on 995's technical data sheet. We have uh, also copies of the test data if somebody actually needs that and to help build a specification. But again, here is a great product, tan colored, so it doesn't show through. 100% um, solids and a great performing product for all kinds of, of wood flooring. Um, the last option we have on a three in one, it's not really an adhesive but it is a double-sided high-performance tape uh, in the form of MAPA Contact SRT. Uh, SRT is a high-performance uh, double-sided acrylic tape. It's about an eighth of an inch thick. It's designed to withstand all the same moisture control uh, properties of uh, a urethane or an MS adhesive, but uh, is a, comes to you in the form of a roll. There's no uh, sticky trowels to be dealt with, no cleanup need to be dealt with. Simply roll the product on the floor, pull the release liner back, install wood flooring, bring the furniture in place, and you're done. Uh, there are some significant benefits 
to the use of Mavic Contact SRT. First and foremost, it's probably got one of the best acoustic properties we have in the offering. Even when we compare that to some other assemblies of products, uh, 995, 985, or even including uh, a Mavic Sonic RM, which we'll talk a little bit about in a minute. Excellent acoustic properties, suitable for use for not only wood, engineered wood, um, parquet, bamboo, etc., but can also be used on LVT as well. So if you're looking for uh, instant functionality, good um, delta numbers for acoustics, free saw stable, you can keep a, a, a roll of Mavic Contact SRT out of the truck at minus 15 degrees, bring it inside and immediately start installing on it. It's pretty cool. Zero VOC, ultimate high moisture resistance. It's not an SDS and all the packaging, which means the release liner and the core the, that it's on are all recycling. So some really exciting opportunities to think about in terms of uh, installation of wood flooring. The bonding solution lineup for you, this chart may be a little bit confusing, but let's just summarized by saying our water-based solutions are all suitable for use on dry concrete and, and wood underlayments, um, but they're limited to engineered wood flooring only. Our urethane adhesives of 975, 977, and 980 are designed to be used on dry concrete as well as uh, wood substrates with limits of, I think the five pounds, 80% number is what we have on that. The 983 and 977 are mid-range performer moisture control solutions. They are offered to you without any acoustic advantage. But if you want all three properties, then you need to go to 995, 985, and SRT. All this stuff is, is readily available to you on our uh, website and our catalogs to look at it. Last and not least, we need to take a look at some must-have accessories for the wood floor installation uh, process and we have a variety of things to look at. The first thing we need to deal with is acoustic solutions. Many times we're trying to install a hardwood floor whether it be engineered or solid in a multifamily housing there are going to be requirements for acoustic transmission from the floors above into the living space below. Uh, a recent introduction to our product offering is Maphisonic RM and we provide this in a variety of different thicknesses, I believe two millimeter, five millimeter, and 10, um, all of which can be used in conjunction with our adhesive systems. Uh, there, if you're gonna install with 975, you can bond the rubber to the substrate with 975 and bond the wood flooring to the Maphisonic RM with 975 and create a very robust uh, acoustic dampened insulation system. Uh, Maphisonic RM is perfectly suitable for wood as well as ceramic and in some instances luxury vinyl tile and plank as well. Another product we have um, is in the form of Ultrabond Eco 907. Some projects you're going to need to deal with on a wood floor installation are going to require a little finesse. You can't always just scoop something out of a bucket and slap some glue on in a corner and get things to bond. So Eco 9 07 is provided to you in 29 ounce cartridges as well as 20 ounce sausage packs uh, and can be used for uh, repairs, stair noses, starter rows. We also recommend this for the use in um, what's called glue assist nail down installation flooring, uh, which is a wide plank installation application on wood substrate where you're nailing that together and gluing it all together. It's a whole different webinar series in itself, uh, but that's what it's there for. It is a modified silane based material, so it means it's easy cleanup, it's fast curing, use repairs and starter rows, and it's easy cleanup. So that's 907, something to keep in mind uh, if you're doing a wood floor installation as well. You always need to have some cleaner around. If you're working with, I don't care whether it's our water-based materials, our MS-based materials or urethane materials, it's always good to have some sort of cleaning material around to keep the fingerprints off the wood floor uh, while you're installing it. The last thing you want to have is to finish your project, step back and admire what you have done and see fingerprints and dabs of glue all over the surface. Clean, clean, clean when you're actually installing it. I would always highly recommend to have a box full of white rags to work with. Don't use the same rag that 
at the beginning that you're using at the end of a project. They're cheap, throw them away. Once a rag gets um, dirty, throw it away and start over with a new one. Our Ultimon Urethane Cleaner is perfectly suitable for uh, removing wet or semi-cured urethane adhesives from the surface of wood flooring, but do use it early on in the system as opposed to a two or three weeks after you're, you're done. Um, the advantages of this product are it's non-flammable, it's not going to evaporate, it's relatively low VOC, it's non-etching, uh, it cleans the wood flooring as well as your tools, uh, and, and it's low odor as well. So how do all of these things come together into some sort of uh, usable system? I mean, I've given you a lot of tools and a lot of information about individual products, but how would I use it on a particular system? Um, and we have a lot of these things around it. Any one of us uh, on MAPA's technical staff or sales support can give you some ideas of how to put them together. But if you were to build, for example, residential engineered wood on an elevated subfloor and you want to bond it down, um, we have some solutions for that. First and foremost, and I'm, I do want to throw this out for you, if you are planning to bond something to any kind of a wood underlayment, I'd like for you to consider the installation of a sacrificial underlayment before you start gluing things down. The reason why I say that is if, if there's any reason why that floor needs to be replaced, it's damaged, it, no, the new owner doesn't like the color, uh, and you can't resand it and finish it. Tearing that floor apart off of a wood subfloor that you've not got some sort of a sacrificial underlayment on is going to basically ruin the subfloor of that building. It's going to, all the urethanes and the MS adhesives have such great bond strength, they're going to tear pieces of that plywood out. So I'd highly recommend uh, the addition of an underlayment nailed uh, a staple to the subfloor before you start bonding things down. And again, that's just my, my point of view. Some, you, you may never think that the floor needs to come up, but I've had to deal with uh, removals before, and that's something, a word of advice. 975 is a great solution for that, engineered wood flooring. 907 would handle the uh, stair nose uh, bonding as well as any trim and uh, transitions and the urethane cleaner. A residential bamboo flooring on a concrete substrate that's elevated moisture. This is where you want to look at one of our MS adhesives. Um, I would highly recommend Eco 985 for this application. And I really wanted to bring this up just uh, to highlight the differences between bamboo flooring and regular engineered or domestic or exotic solid wood flooring. Bamboo flooring is more like bonding a piece of plastic to the floor as opposed to uh, an organic material in the form of wood. Bamboo is a manufactured process. It begins with bamboo that's grass. They slice it up. They embed it into a bunch of plastic resin. They put it under a lot of pressure and heat and create a very rigid, somewhat environmental friendly type product, but it's also non-porous. Using a urethane adhesive under a non-porous flooring material like a bamboo is a little bit of a challenge in the fact that when urethanes cure, they have a tendency to off, they do off-gas CO2. That's not a problem if you have a porous wood substrate to allow the CO2 to migrate into. Uh, engineered wood flooring, solid wood flooring all have capillaries that will allow that CO2 to evaporate. But bamboo does not. So if you're installing a urethane adhesive on top of a high moisture concrete slab uh, and trying to bond bamboo, all of that CO2 gets trapped in that bond line and can create a little bit of a, a Swiss cheesy bond line. It's still adequate, but in my opinion, it's really not the best. MS adhesives, on the other hand, do not generate CO2. They do not generate a gas when they cure. A small couple of molecules of methanol uh, but that's an evaporative solvent, not really something that's going to create any gas by any means. So you're going to wind up with a much more robust, resilient line for bonding of, of uh, bamboo type materials. So word of advice, if you were working on bamboo, which is still out there in the marketplace, I would highly recommend using 985 for the installation of that product. A system build, I got a residential loft with exotic hardwoods and acoustic requirements. Uh, I would still highly recommend you do some subfloor preparation based on a MAPA self-leveling underlayment. Uh, bond our MAPASonic RM 
five millimeter, 10 millimeter to the subfloor using 980, use 980 to install the exotic hardwoods, keeping everything clean. And I will guarantee you'll wind up with an installation that's not only beautiful, but it's gonna deliver your minimum IIC values of 50 or 55 when you get things put together that way as well. And there are also opportunities for commercial domestic hardwoods on damp concrete substrates. And here, revisiting this again, I wanna make sure you're thinking about using the right patching products, leveling products. MRS or Extreme 2 are the way to go for high moisture concrete substrates. Uh, in this commercial environment, I wanna make sure I don't have any, any kind of impact on that moisture with my wood flooring. So a PMB one coat on top of MRS or Extreme 2 or Quick Patch uh, or Porous Concrete, then followed by 980, wood flooring installation, Eco 907 to handle any of the accessories and urethane cleaners, makes a great installation for a commercial environment uh, with a lifetime performance warranty, okay? All right, so having said all that, I've given you an awful lot of information. Uh, and I hope a lot of this has made sense to you. And I'd like to now open up the floor and ask Jen to kind of moderate and see if there are any questions that I might be able to answer. Jen, back to you. Okay, thank you, Jeff. That was great. We do have a few questions. Um, the first one, why are MS-based adhesives easier to clean off wood floors as compared to urethanes? Excellent question. Uh, and that really has a lot to do with the chemistry of the adhesive as well as the chemistry of the wood floor finish itself. Um, most wood flooring finishes these days, and I could be corrected on this, but in my understanding, a lot of it is a urethane type finish, uh, whether it's, um, yeah, it's a urethane type finish. So if you get a urethane adhesive on top of a urethane finish, the two have a great affinity for each other, and they, they like to lock themselves together very tightly. Um, so if you leave a urethane adhesive on top of a urethane finished hardwood, they, uh, they've got some chemical groups that like to bond. Even if you're able to get it off cleanly, you may notice some etching of where the adhesive residue was because of that affinity. Modified silane products, on the other hand, have that trimethoxy functional group, which is not the same thing as a urethane finish. Uh, it's not the same thing as an acrylic coating as well. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily grab as strong on that finish as it does uh, as, as a urethane. So that would make it a little bit easier to clean up. Both urethanes and MSs work extremely well on the bottom of those wood structures, trust me. Uh, they're gonna lock and penetrate and grab very well, but that's the reason why MS adhesives are a little bit easier to clean up as opposed to, to ure urethanes, okay? Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, here's a good one. Can I use any of Mape's wood floor adhesives to install unfinished solid hardwood flooring? That is a good question and it's kind of a trick question. Um, the answer is yes and no. If I'm in installing, for example, an unfinished herringbone floor application, you might be able to get away with using a wood adhesive, a urethane for that because the pieces are short enough that there's not going to be any bow or dimensional issues that have to be dealt with. Most unfinished hardwood that I'm aware of um, is properly milled and all that kind of stuff, but it's raw. And when you're laying this all out on the floor, if you stack them up together, rack them together, as they call it, there are going to be gaps in that floor the nailing process or the stapling process is designed to hold all that stuff together and tight. So if that floor, wood flooring piece is dimensionally true or short enough, like less than 18 inches and it doesn't have any bow into it, yes, you can glue those things to the floor. Um, the other, if it's longer than that and if you're trying to compensate for any kind of shape issues, not recommended um, going to use a urethane. It's not going, it doesn't have enough wet suction or green strength to hold things in place uh, without mechanical assist. Now that's the trick question part of that is that yes, you can glue unfinished 
hardwood to the floor in what's called a glue assist nail down installation. And this is becoming more common these days when wood floor plank widths are getting wider and wider and wider. Uh, one of my favorite hobbies of my life is to look at old houses and I look at a lot of wood floors because I'm curious and a lot of it will used to be two inch wide maple or two and a half inch oak. Now we're getting was three inches, four inches. Now it seems to be common to get five inch wide planks. I've seen stuff that's even 12 to 14 inch wide individual plank flooring that's currently being installed today. <clears throat> to install a wide plank in a nail down application over a, a wood substrate, which is kind of the way things would go, uh, you basically anchored off a boat at one end of the boat and allowed the tail of that boat to move over the tongue of the other boat, if you will. Uh, and when changes in humidity occur, you're going to wind up with some gapping uh, going on at the unbonded end of that plank. If you understand what I'm saying, wood shrinks and grows. That's the nature of the beast. And changes in humidity in your environment are going to make it change as well. So gluing part of that wood to the substrate as well as nailing allows you to accommodate for bow in the wood as well as lock the back end of that. Uh, plank in place, minimizing potential gapping with changes in humidity. So, yes, you can bond unfinished hardwood as long as it's dimensionally straight, and yes, you can bond unfinished hardwood as long as you're using a nail and glue simply together. It has nothing to do whether or not it's strong enough to handle the flooring machinery that goes on top to sand and finish the wood flooring. It's more to deal with uh, dimensional shape. Gotcha. Um, how does Ultrabond Eco 962 adhesive compare to Ultrabond Eco 373? Uh, very similar structures. Um, however, Eco 962 has a small solvent addition in it. Um, that is no hidden secret. If you look at the SDS, I believe there's a xylene addition into the formulation that was added to speed up the flash time, uh, make it a little bit more aggressive in terms of its bond to wood as well as um, the subfloor as well. Uh, so the two are very similar. Uh, they both work for LVT. They're both very aggressive, pressure sensitive adhesives. Um, one has got a little bit higher VOCs than the other. Really, that. Uh, other than that, 962 was engineered or designed to install engineered wood flooring. Uh, and oh, by the way, it will do LVT. Eco 373, on the other hand, is a low or very low VOC product designed for the installation of LVT. And oh, by the way, we could perhaps figure out how to make it used to work for engineered wood flooring as well. So two are very similar, but the primary difference is in VOC uh, contribution. Okay, great. Well, you know, that brings us to uh, two o'clock and uh, that will conclude today's MAPE Online webinar. If uh, there are any other questions, please send them to MAPE Digital at mape.com and we'll be sure to get them to Jeff and uh, get them answered for you. Jeff, thank you for today's webinar. It was very oh. informative and thank you everybody for joining us. We know you have very busy days, so we appreciate it. Um, and I guess we'll see you all again next time. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Bye. Bye everyone.